Today we continue our discussion with Mr. Langston Roach, highlighting his journey on the establishment of the LRI Group of Companies. Mr. Roach, what started in your garage is now a 70,000 plus square foot operation. Is LRI getting into the business of artificial intelligence and automation? It's all the buzz these days. <laughs> all right, let's go back. So yes, we started in a garage and the garage was, I, I think it's 30 by 23, which is about 600, 700 square feet. And whereas LRI home operates in 70,000 square feet, the group, as you mentioned, operates in 120,000 square feet. From our inception, because we started off fully manual, right, and because we started off in an industry in which we had little knowledge, we have had this Kaizen principle to our whole operation. And Kaizen, as you would know, is continuous incremental improvement. It's a Japanese term yes. that has been translated right, into the English language. So that every day we go to work looking for ways in which we can improve every product and every process. Right? And that's where we have, we have had to create the environment for workers or employees as we have had to create. Because a lot of your suggestions and improvements come from the people who are carrying out the functions. And we have to learn as managers to listen, interpret what they're saying, and where possible implement what they're saying. So yes, we, we have gone, a lot of our automation has taken place in our production process and in our accounting processes. So when I walk into the factory and we have labeling machines, filling machines, some of them just semi-automatic, some of them are close to automatic. We have compounding systems. We have woolly birds up in the air now, increasing the airflow in the factory. When we started off, we had one van doing the deliveries to the supermarkets. Now we have 13 trucks, and we hire on a regular basis contract trucks. So it's, it's just been a continuous outgrowth. Well, you mentioned distribution, and of course, you are a Caribbean company. How important do you think it is for us as Caribbean people to make our own products as you have? I think it's very important from the point of view that we should understand ourselves and our needs. For instance, when you're doing a product and you're selecting fragrances, when you're doing a product and you're selecting colors, when you're designing a label and you want it to appeal to the Trinidadian and the Caribbean consumer, right? This is our major market. In terms of foreign manufactured goods, this is a small market for them. They're not going to design their labels to suit this market. They're not going to select their fragrances to suit this market. They're going to make things for their bigger market and then spin it off here, right? But this is our focus. So I think it's important that we have manufactured organizations in Trinidad and the Caribbean that can reflect the tastes and the needs right, of the people that we serve in the Caribbean. But that's only one part. The other thing is distributors do not employ half as many people as manufacturers. So manufacturing things in the Caribbean creates employment. Manufacturing stuff adds value. Manufacturing stuff in the Caribbean creates a higher skill level among employees. So you're talking capacity building. Capacity, perhaps. Right. That's the term I might have been looking for. <laughs> right, so we build capacity here. The other thing is that during the pandemic, I think it came to the fore why we should do local manufacturing. We have had shipments, a shipment of, let's say, isopropyl alcohol on a ship leaving the United States when the embargo 
on alcohol was announced in the States. And they recalled the ship and took our container off the boat. And we had placed an order for 16. That's among the, the demand job. And all 16 containers at one point in the other had to hit this Miami, because it had to hit there before to come to Trinidad. All of them were embargoed. And we had a situation here where, luckily, we have a rum manufacturing company in Trinidad and Tobago, and we had to turn to them. And we had to climb over hoops. It took us months before we could get the license and other approvals we can to buy a product from a, another private company that's just down the road from here. But we passed through those hoops, we got it done, and because of that, we were able to supply all of Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean, right, almost single-handedly with hand sanitizers. A perfect example of there being opportunity even in the depths of the challenges which were brought about by the, by the pandemic. pandemic. So we increased our employment and we kept all our other suppliers open. An example of thriving amidst the chaos. Chaos is always another word for opportunity. But you've got to know, to, you have to look for it. I've enjoyed our dialogue, the insights. It has been motivating to see how the value system coming from the home has really laid a foundation that has inspired you all of your life. You've said a few times that it's a work in progress. It's continuous improvement. Going forward, what is your vision for your company, the community that you serve, and for our region? My over, overarching answer to that would, would be, I want to see us become the best that we can be. Um, and that will apply to, to everything. In terms of the company, I have passed on the running of this company and the other um, offshoots to my sons. So they now run the day-to-day -day operations of the company. I am around to give advice, mentorship, and interference from time to time. Right? I just have to find something to keep me occupied and to do. But they are more than equipped. Um, to run the companies because they have been involved in the business from their birth and they have been involved in the company since their graduations in the early 20s, right? Um, I could only see us growing. I, um, I can't say where we'll be in 10 years or 20 years, but I know that the growth that is taking place in the company now is taking place at a far faster rate than it was in the beginning because we have the resources, we have people in place, we have the capital, we have the market, we have the brand, 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 um, brand experience and the brand, brand width, so that um, we are going to grow at a, a faster rate. In what direction are we going to head? That's up to the boys. But I see us definitely um, becoming a stronger manufacturing organization. This should remain our base and supply the Caribbean with uh, a high quality product as, as competitively as possible in the years to come. But I want to see as the company, the community, growing and getting better, getting um, solving some of the problems we have with with crime, with inefficiency, with low productivity. We, haven't had, we don't have this problem internally here in a major way, but we have, to, we have to work in a society which doesn't work. And, and it's frustrating at times, whether you want to get a, a, um, a truck on a, a boat to Tobago, or you want to, um, your people have to get to work on time, and there's a traffic jam here or a traffic jam there. We, we work in a society that, are that could be much, much more friendly, um, business friendly, uh, people friendly, and much more efficient. 
and um, we will do whatever we can to to contribute to this. Um, we serve on, or my son serve on different committees and organizations, and we are trying to to use the knowledge we have gained in our businesses to to help in a in a, in a wider sphere, All right? So. Let's see how it goes. Mr. Roach, thank you for your time. Thank you for being so open in the way you've shared your experiences. I assure you, I am certainly richer for it and our audience will be as well. Thank you for having me. I hope you share some of your riches with me. I can. <laughs> I can, I, can, I can certainly use some, but I appreciate the recognition given um, to me and my organization by a, a company I look up to, Caribbean Airlines, uh, requesting that I, I, do this, I do this interview. It's been, um, how should I put it? It should be, I am appreciative of it. Right? So I hope I have been able to add some value, because that's one of my key points, in some way to, to the listeners, to the people who will view this, this interview. Thank you very, very much. I'm confident that you have. You've been watching another episode of Caribbean Connections. I am Dion Legault, and thank you for viewing. Mm -hmm.